everybody, it's Callie. Welcome to You So Can. All right, so today I'm just gonna talk about seam finishes. And no, this is not Mortal Kombat where you need to finish him. It's um, really the point of seam finishes are is so that it helps reinforce this bit. So when you wash it, cause shit's gonna fray. So that when you wash it, the frayed bit doesn't get all the way down to your stitching line. Now this is a surged uh, seam finish. This is what you do commonly see in like ready to wear clothing. Get, you know, anything that you bought at the store, usually you will see some sort of seam finish like this. Now, if you wanna drop coin on a serger, go for it. If you got the patience, half the time I wanna hit mine with a fucking sledgehammer cause it can go fuck itself. But, this is usually, this is like, really does, it just like encapsulates it in threads so it's less likely to fray. You can either press the seam open or serge stuff together like this. But if you don't have a serger, we've got lots of other ways to do it. I'm gonna kind of go from least complicated to more, little bit more steps here but okay got that this is what's called a pinked edge and it is cut with these types of scissors see it's got like the little jaggedy ones now you want to if you're going to get some pinking shears okay that's what these are called make sure they're for fabric not for scrapbooking because scrapbooking ones ain't gonna cut through your shit for damn Okay, I will admit these are a tad bit expensive if you buy them new at the store. I got these at my local Creative Reuse Center. Uh, I have like a thrift shop for craft supplies, if you will. And I got these for $3. Um, so just if you've got one of those in the area, hunt around and see if you can get one. But basically this is what it does is because it makes a bunch of like little bias edges you know 45 degree angles is that it's that stuff is less likely to fray so there's your pinked edge okay you want to use a pinked edge on woven fabrics okay this is probably the most common way to do uh, finish your seams if you don't have a serger. All I did was I cut, I, I shit, excuse me, I sewed my 5 8 seam allowance and then I just set it to zigzag. And this is a stitch length of two and a stitch width of three. And then I trimmed it down. If you're feeling froggy, you can just do the zag at the edge of the fabric but i've had problems with that rolling you know rolling the edges under so they, that may not be for you but or if you can get it to work rock on um, i just like to zig do the zigzags and then trim it close to the zigzag now this is what's called a french seam as you can see everything is encapsulated in this little fabric envelope and how you do this is that you sew with the wrong sides together you can either do a quarter of an inch or three-eighths of an inch depends on what you prefer i usually do a quarter of an inch and then go the, go around like how i'm about to explain but you do um do the right sides together so quarter of an inch and then press it back and then put the right sides together so you make this little seam allowance envelope if you will and then you can sew it at three eighths play with you know you might need to trim this down a little bit your you know the first bit of the seam but this is really great for um, like lightweight fabrics, sheer fabrics, thin fabrics, uh, stuff that you don't want to, you know, stuff that frays a lot. Um, 
I wouldn't use this on really thick fabrics, but you know, that's a good way. And the last one, well, last two I'm gonna show you, I did kind of both on one. These are using bias binding. And this one is, is called a bound seam. And this one is just a Hong Kong finish. They're both used with bias binding, but this, if you can see, it has really what you do is you sew on the bias binding. Okay. You sew it on this little fold and then what you do, and then you press it up and then come back around and then it's like, it's like it's making a little hug around that seam allowance. Okay. So you sew it on, wrap it around, and then you sew it back down again. Now the trick is, here I stitched in a ditch, but the trick is making sure that you catch that back part of the seam. I don't really use this. <laughs> if I'm gonna use a bias bound seam, I use a Hong, what this is, the donut fabric is a Hong Kong finish. And it wasn't too good about stitching in the ditch here. But what this is, is you sew it on and then you wrap it around okay and then you've got the raw edge back here but then what you do is you stitch in the ditch like right next to the edge and that'll catch this pit bit back here and then you just trim off then you just trim off the extra okay this this method is really great like say if you're making an unlined coat and you've got like um like say i've got a black coat that i did with like turquoise seam seam binding it's really great but you can do this with the seam pressed open or with it pressed closed it's really up to you but this is a great way to finish have everything all clean and fun and great and I sound like an idiot but let's throw these in the wash so we can see how they fare up because the whole point of this is so that we don't have stuff fray on the inside so let's go to the washing machine Okay, everybody, so we're out of the wash. So let's take a look at what works, what, what held up. All right, here's our surged edge. Since it's contained in the thread, it's looking pretty good. Here is our pink edge. As you can see, stuff is fuzzy, but it's still, you know, kind of maintained. This is, I wouldn't really use this for a piece of clothing that I'm gonna wash a lot. It, this would be like something that's very tightly woven and something that I'm not gonna wash very often. And honestly, I've never used this in clothing. So, yeah. but just wanna show you what it looks like. And here we go with our zigzagged edge. Not much different from our friend, you know, and the surged edge there's a little more you know we got a little more fuzz a little more thread action happening you know but that's gonna happen and you know what it's okay it can just be trimmed down a little bit and you're good to go now these next two obviously since they like have their own self-contained you know for the for the seam seam allowance obviously that held up gorgeously and then here we go with our bound edges. Again, here's our fully bias bound seam, held up gorgeous. And here it is with our Hong Kong seam finish. Now, because this is still a raw, raw edge for this bias seam, since it's bias cut, it's not gonna fray as much, but you're still gonna get a little bit of fuzziness there. But you know what? It's usually not as bad as if you left it for the regular bits. All right, so hope this helps you pick 
which kind of seam finish you want to do. If you want to try some, experiment, go for it. If anything, always practice. If you want to do a test like I did to see what would hold best in the wash for your fabric, go for it. That's what scraps are for. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Y'all are doing awesome. So proud of you. Keep kicking ass, taking names, sewing all kinds of fun stuff, and uh, be excellent to each other. Bye-bye.